back room that year. I mean, we had you as a, a team captain, you know, the experienced leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duke was a true freshman, you know, super talented recruit coming in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you guys have like a did you have like a mentor relationship with him or take me? Yeah. yeah, man, it was it was somewhat like like a like a big brother little brother relationship. Like I, Duke had Duke was so he when he came in he was already so smart he was already so mature he already come from a great family and a great background. So I mean, for me, it was like, it was like I didn't have to do nothing but do what everybody else did and sit back and enjoy his talents and just be complimentary to that. You know what I mean? And and it was it was it was really fun. I mean, he made me so much better. I tell people, I say, people was like, were you upset about Duke coming in your senior? I say, not at all, because without him, he he made me faster. He made me. I mean, because I had to be better. I mean, because he was so talented. I mean, he he did so many things so well at a young age that I knew I had to up my game. Uh, otherwise, I wasn't going to get as many carries as I wanted. So. You know, I, I really enjoy um, having that competition. And it was something that I was used to anyway. You know what I mean? I, you got to understand, I just had Lamar Miller in the room the year <laughs> yeah. before. You know, so it wasn't like, I, you know, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like um, I was going, it was like I was, um, like there was something that was new to me. And then the, the year before that, our sophomore year, D- Damian Berry was starting and me and yeah. Lamar was on the bench. You know, me and Lamar was, coming off the bench splitting time and I mean we we actually had like I think I, I mean, we, we actually had a pretty good season that sophomore year but you know so with Duke coming in I already knew that um the competition was going to be what it was and Duke was a great player and I figured it was only going to do nothing do nothing but to help us win and I tell you what and we, we could have got the AC championship my senior year I wouldn't mind by having Duke Johnson on my team because I know it would have helped us it would help us it would help me got a ring you know what I mean so, yeah. so I mean, it would it would have been nothing but positive. I mean, it would have been great if Lamar would have even stayed because then we would have been a three headed monster. I mean, we did that with me, Damien, and um, Lamar, and and it all worked out still. So I mean, I, I enjoyed it, and and I wish we could. I wish that he could have displayed his talents his true freshman year and SC championship and really, really, you know, prepared his career to what he wanted to be. Hopefully, maybe it would have been a Heisman Trophy winner after that. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know. We all know what winning does to programs and, and accolades, you know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So um, something that maybe a lot of people don't know, but in 2012, you were um, awarded the, the Community Service Man of the Year Award. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how much does that mean to you? And, and, and where does that, um, you know, how did, where does that place in terms of your accomplishments and accolades? Well, I think that's, that's, that's very high on my uh, list of accomplishments and achievements, definitely at the University of Miami, because it was something that, I just didn't want to be after four years of playing football in Miami and not being from Miami. You know, I I say, you know, I came to the city. The city has made a man out of me. It's taught me so many great things. You know, what can I do to make sure that I uh, repay the city, what the city have repaid, what the city have paid me. So, you know, I took it upon myself. Um, at the end of my junior year to dedicate myself now and any time that I have free time that I had to not really go out and enjoy the, the nightlife and the scenery and the, the, the Miami beaches and stuff, but to go out and really get in the inner city and spend more time with the community. So me and my, um, my academic advisor, Kelly Pierce, and also Ryan McNamee, um, you know, our team, our team liaison, if you will, he was over everything. Um, they kind of, we kind of put together this, project you know just me just consist of me and we call it rushing into the community and it's just it was uh over uh, over 200 hours of community service um i did a bone marrow blood drive um we did uh, a, a list of things i end up being on the all state um a good hands team my senior which is only 22 players out of the whole country basically it's a team starting 22 players out of the whole country that's um, on the Hall State's good hands team. So I ended up making that list, which was a good accomplishment as well to be nationally recognized for my um, for my community service that I did in my community just in Miami. So it was um, it was it was really good to be recognized. It was it was something that I took very seriously, something that that really changed my life, you know, um, in a sense of I got to get a chance to not only 
um, see the fans in the stands, but get around them and spend time with them and spend time with their children, go to their schools and actually see what was going on and kind of make a lasting impression on, on, you know, people that had done that for me for the last four years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Mike, the last question I got for you is uh, I want to talk about your rookie year in the NFL Mm -hmm. Uh, week nine at Seattle. You have a 158 yard game. Yep. Uh, Tell me about that, man. What was it like being in the NFL? I mean, every kid's dream and uh, just having a game like that, your rookie season. Oh, man, it was it was phenomenal, man. It was it was phenomenal. Actually, it was my second start. Doug had. So I got drafted in the sixth round. Of course, it was supposed to be in the fourth. I got called on a draft day. It was like we need to get a pass rusher. So they had to get a pass rusher. They got a pass rusher. Then they ended up getting me in the sixth round, which was OK, because, you know, I tell guys all the time. The NFL is more about positioning more than draft position. You know, you can get drafted in the third round and get cut. You get drafted in the fourth, fifth round and get cut. You know, or you can get drafted in the the, the the fourth round and never play like you need to. So I got drafted in the sixth, you know, and I was the backup running back. So, I, you know, I had an opportunity to play right away. Doug went down with a season end an injury, um, and I started against Carolina Thursday night. Then uh, um, played against Seattle that next game. And, I mean, I kind of knew that. I was going to end up having a good game, not only because of the game plan, I had prepared for it. I knew if I would ever got more than 20 carries at Miami, I would have rushed for 100 yards. You know, of course, you know, you got to understand Lamar, dude, they ran 4-3. So, I mean, they're going to house call that thing, you know, <laughs> anytime. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm a 20 carry guy, you know. So, I wasn't surprised when I was able to get, you know, 20 carries. I was able to produce a good game like that. So, I mean, that it was phenomenal. I mean, in Seattle, you know, winning the Super Bowl that year. There was number one defense in the league. We had the worst offense in the league and the worst team in the league. So, you know, I think that game spoke for itself when it come down to me handling business. And then actually the next game after that was almost just as well. I was playing Miami, the Miami Dolphins on Monday night. I was four carries, 50 yards, first drive, about to go in the score. Then I break my ankle. So, I mean, wow. um, just being just being in the NFL and being, a, being able to experience that whirlwind of um, – um, uh, success. Um, it was fun. I really enjoyed it, man. And it, and it really prepared me to, um, to, um, live now a real peaceful life after football, uh, when it comes down to understanding, uh, where I'm at and what I have accomplished. And I'm proud of those things, you know, that's, Hey bro, that is, that is awesome to hear. And Mike, yeah. honestly, this is one of the best interviews we have done. And, oh, and nice. thank you so much for coming yeah, on. Absolutely. Whenever you want to come on again, talk some hurricanes, for you sure. are more than welcome, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you guys, man. I'm sorry it took me so long to get back. You know, just, um, when I retired, I retired from concussion. So now, I'm, you know, just doing rehab every day and just taking it easy. So, man, I appreciate you guys working with me. I know I'll be a little, um, sparing with the Instagram and trying to get back, but I appreciate you guys. Hey, absolutely, man. We'll be in touch, brother. Hope, uh, hope yeah, you, man. you're safe, man. Yeah, man. Let me know when you guys put out the link and I'll uh, retweet it and do all those things. All right. Cool. Sounds good, all brother. Right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, all Mike. Right, yeah. All right. Thanks. Dude, that was so cool. That, that was, that, that was maybe our best interview we've ever done. Yeah. So I mean it, it won't it won't end up showing on the uh you know, we just do the the audio feed, right? But uh so Mike was on video during the interview and he was just smiling the whole time, man. It could I couldn't help but just Man, I I loved it. I that, freaking... that made me like that made me very happy. Like yeah. that that was definitely worth getting up early for. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I'd do it over and over again. That was yeah, I'm I'm excited for everyone to hear that one. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, one of my favorite interviews that we've done easily, if not my favorite, and uh, and that was just that was such a was I mean, those, those times were hard in yeah. in Miami Hurricanes history, you know, the the 2009 to 2012, but dude, like that that was the the period in my life, just what was going on, you know, that would have been ninth grade through my senior year of high school. Uh, mm-hmm. actually, no, it would have been 10th grade through the end of, uh, through the year after high school. Um, but dude, those were, those were the years that my Miami fanhood like really became emboldened, you know, it was, 
I, I've said it on this podcast, but it's like my fandom was made through the adversity of, you know what I mean? Those tough seasons where we were talented, we should have done better. Um, you know, I mean, uh, maybe you had the same experience going to high school here in Utah, but people love to crap on the hurricanes, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, cause I'd wear my, my, the U shirt. I I'd even wear a shirt that said the real U on it. And that really made Utes fans mad. Um, but, you know, people would just crap on me every time they lost. And I'm just, you know, I had to, I had to stick up for my guys. And so it just changed my life, man. Yeah. And, and, and 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 it's those guys like I mean Mike James like that yeah. um it, it's those games like the the George that Georgia Tech game or that uh that really like those when times suck you those are the ones that you you know you remember and um damn that was that was awesome I'm like so happy right now like yeah. that really just like made my entire week yeah no oh, dude me too man yeah and, uh, I remember going into that 2012 season. First of all, I, I loved Lamar Miller. I just I thought so highly of him. So when he decided to leave early, I was like, oh, crap. You know, like, uh, you know, not that I was not that I had any negative feelings towards Mike James, um, but he just hadn't been as proven. You know what I mean? I think Lamar Miller had like over 200 carries the year before, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so we we're just unsure. And then. uh you know, I just, I love the way that he stepped up, you know, um, I mean, obviously Duke was immensely talented and I think Duke averaged, I mean, I, I can't remember the exact number, so I'll exaggerate, but it was like, it was like 17 yards of carry or something that year, something crazy. And I think it's closer to like eight, um, you know, but Mike James did so good. Uh, you know, he was the team captain, uh, the stability in the early years of the Al Golden era, um, Dude, he was just a beast, man. I, I that's cool. It, it brought back a lot of memories of of me watching Kane's football, talking to him. So yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I'm very very excited for uh for Kane's fans to listen to that. So um besides that, we we may be back on tomorrow after this uh, Romello Brinson announcement. So cross your fingers for that. Um other than that, any other any other things we got to mention? Uh, no, man. I I mean. I, I'd like to get more guys from those years on here. We need to we need to work towards that. So well, and and next week we might be uh we might be having on Levon Ponder and one of his uh, former teammates for the Canes as well. So um, love Levon. Shout out to Levon. I love Levon. Yeah, Levon's a Levon's a good one. So um, other than that, let's let's keep it going. Our numbers are are freaking awesome. So thank you guys so much for for continuing to support us, and um, we love. We love doing this, man. I it, I love recording this. Like it's by far the best part of my day. And um, yeah, maybe we'll 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 talk tomorrow. And until then, let's uh, thank you to Mike James and Go Canes, man. Go Canes, man. This has been the Forza Podcast. Remember to like and leave a comment to help our podcast.